can you lead us in a word of prayer this morning sure pastor i sure dear heavenly father we praise you acknowledge your holy name at this moment we come on your throne of praise uh, thank you god for this wonderful opportunity for this class for for of, of this i'm class father lead us in your way father thank you guide us father uh, bless pastor nancy as well so this class shall be conducted in the way you want us to be father uh, let us open our mind open our hearts father so that we receive your word we receive your insight in depth knowledge is father so that we can apply in our lives and in the ministry as a well, father bless this class father i i praise you i praise you father thank you i did get all this hearts into your throne of praise um and i ask this prayer in the name of our lord jesus christ amen 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 thank you prabhakar uh, good morning once again everyone we will continue uh, in our study of the apostolic i remember in the last class we couldn't take the questions of uh, two students so i thought we can begin from there uh, one is say the other i think is elisha he hasn't yet joined uh, so uh, say do you remember the question which you wanted to ask yesterday Yes, Pastor Nancy. Um, yeah. What I wanted to ask was, um, I, I mean, we may get to it, or I don't know if it's. I've not checked the notes to see if it's covered. But basically, what I'm, what I wanted to ask is that what I know about apostles is that they can also function in the other offices. They can function in the prophetic, in the evangelistic, in the pastoric, and uh, Uh, in the teaching ministry, so I'm just wondering: is there also a possibility that some apostles could be apostolic prophets, apostolic teachers, apostolic evangelists, apostolic te- um, teachers, uh, apostolic pastors? Is there a possibility that an apostle could actually be um, functioning in one of these ministries alongside to his apostolic calling? right or it's just something that just happens when it's needed you know for the places the lord sends him to or she to her to so that that was just what i was thinking about uh, i don't know if that is scriptural to say or in line <laughs> thank you yeah thank you thank you say for that question so if i got your question right you're asking if the apostolic um also carries the anointings of the other offices that was the first question and the second yeah. question is if there is a combination like uh, an apostle who is also a prophet an apostle who's also a teacher you know so the combination of a couple of uh, offices so the answer to the first question is uh, if you take it in general that the apost uh, the apostle also is a part of all the other offices that may not be true because we will study we will look at the the features of the apostolic anointing so along with the apostolic anointing comes um, you know gifts of revelation uh, so there's a certain grace given under the prophetic uh, un- apostolic anointing so you would find that people who have that uh, that Uh, grace or they are in that office they automatically have the ability to um you know flow in the prophetic um, and uh, you know uh, move in the supernatural power of god so signs wonders miracles teaching capacity evangelistic capacity so it is kind of inbuilt into the apostolic anointing itself so to say that somebody who has the apostolic anointing also is part of the prophetic office uh, and the other offices may not be true but if somebody is part of the apostolic office they may display features of the other offices i hope i'm making it clear uh, say did, did yes, you get you are, you are okay, you are okay great yeah. yeah so that is the uh, my explanation for your first uh, question the second question is yes a combination is very much possible because you see that uh, even when you look at other pro- uh, other offices so you can have a prophet teacher you can have a 
an evangelist uh, and an apostle so it the combinations are various it depends on the the call that god has for a particular individual so a certain individual can be part of more than one office uh, but as i shared in the last class the only person we know who uh, had who was appointed in all five jesus christ is jesus christ yeah so we i i can't think of anyone else who who is called to all the five offices oh certainly no i i wasn't asking for the five offices i okay. I, I was i i, I, I know that is only jesus i was only asking if there's a possibility which you we will rightly answer it yes. is possible that an apostle can be an apostolic prophet apostolic teacher which you've answered thank you so much man thank you yeah. man yeah thank yeah. you thank you say so uh, glad you know we could um, we could address those questions uh is uh, where is elisha elisha had a question but i don't see him in the class today so yeah we wouldn't know what he wanted to ask okay so in that case let's just continue uh okay coming back oh louis yeah louis uh, please go ahead good morning ma good morning everyone um apart from the can can you can you function in all of the graces not not simultaneously but in different um requests is it, is it possible to function in the grace all the graces as an apostle uh at the time you come to the prophetic um evangelist teacher or preach or uh which one again just is it possible to function in that in the five graces as 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 a minister not necessarily the title but just the the, the functions of the graces yeah okay yeah. yes sir okay. Louis, I yes. Guess what you're saying uh so it depends on the situation again okay so depending on the situation i think the grace would be activated um so can an apostle flow in all the graces we would say yes because as i um go over some scriptures today you will understand that all these all these functions of whether it is teaching or revelation of god's word or uh, you know going and um, taking new territory or preaching the gospel to a, a, a new set of people what else is there mm, teacher apostle prophet uh, evangelist pastor yeah pastor so pastor is uh, working with the congregation and also uh, strengthening the leadership so there are features of all the all the uh, graces as you put it uh, but it depends on the function of that particular apostle see every apostle and the calling uh, or let me put it this way the assignment of every apostle is different so uh, we can't say that a uh, paul will function like a peter or a peter will function like a james or a james will function like john because all are apostles but everyone has their own assignment and everyone has and depending on the assignment the grace is manifest so i hope that makes sense yeah yes yes ma um just that my experience um is i found out that i had um it's like god was taking me through all the graces that's what i'm asking um mm -hmm. was it something mm -hmm. i was conscious but I just found out that with my work i found out that i was going i was like being trained under each grace so that's some accent so it's not necessarily that i'm called i was called into any particular um court and office just that i found out that i was working with each grace so that's why i was asking how you know how do you how do you put that in the light of the word you know to know that okay why is god taking you through this this kind of route that's what I'm asking. Mm. Mm. Okay, I get okay. your point. Okay. So the thing is, um, Luisi, for us to have a function under all the graces, again, may not necessarily mean that we are called to the office of the apostle because, as we've seen, if you consider the prophetic, there is a prophesying believer, which means that all of us can. function under the prophetic grace 
we all have the great commission so all of us can preach the gospel so then there is the evangelistic grace all of us you know paul when he writes to uh, i think it's the colossians he says like you know sing to one another in songs hymns so basically like bring the word of god encourage one another teach one another so just because we teach one another it doesn't make us a teacher right so every believer if you take it for that matter we can function in all the graces but again as we've seen the extent of the function is what determines whether we are in the category of a believer who is exercising these graces or you know a little uh, again if you want to look at it as levels a little higher up in the grace where you are you are called into an office of you know uh, whatever prophet evangelist and all so uh, my point is see every believer can actually function in all the graces okay depending on the requirement but this is more about the calling of god on the individual so if there is a calling in the apostolic office the extent to which an individual functions under all these graces will be you know like very if you compare it to a regular believer it will be many many times higher or you know many many times greater so that's how you would you would look at it so um, uh, i think uh, it's it's about getting a confirmation from god that one is called into the office of a an apostle else it's hard to tell just by the graces you know manifesting that oh, okay uh, so and so is is um, or to make a self assessment that okay i am called into the the apostolic office so it would be best to get a confirmation from god thank you very much ma'am thank you so much yeah. yeah thank you thank you okay so let's go back to what we have been studying and i really want to apologize when it comes to the definition uh, of apostle i explained it correctly to all of us but the word right the splitting of the word and the greek word and what it means i it was a little mixed up what i said because um, yeah i don't know how i didn't give too much attention to it so uh, apostle if you if you split the word the greek word apo means from i said stolos means from so that is wrong i apologize uh, apo means from and stolos means i send okay so that is the correct meaning apo means from stolos means i send so i just wanted to make that correction uh, yeah now let's jump to chapter 2 here uh, and we are looking at you know the way i told us in the last class that uh, when we started discussing the prophetic it was very important to see how the prophetic anointing manifested in the old testament and how it manifested in the new testament so uh, it's only when we have a good foundation of scripture that we can make an assessment of whether that is really a prophetic anointing or not uh, otherwise what happens is so much that is said about the prophetic anointing one who doesn't have a grip in the word will not know they won't be able to verify and validate so the same thing is being applied to the apostolic so we are going from scripture we will look at scriptures passages and uh, you know then uh, later on kind of look at the practical aspects of the apostolic anointing so chapter 2 here is uh, simply uh, scriptures from the new testament okay talking about the apostolic uh, apostolic in in general uh, why not from the old testament because you don't really have these offices manifesting right in the old testament prophetic yes we've seen uh, but apostolic or uh, maybe features you know leadership and all but we can't really call it apostolic you know, from the um, uh, we we don't call it apostolic I, I, at least i haven't heard anyone talk about the apostolic in the old testament so uh, we just have the new testament scriptures here for us to look at so uh, it, it's um, pretty simple also um, we have 12 apostles that we have seen jesus selected them and he sent them out to do the works of the kingdom he gave them authority okay so he sent the 12 out he gave them authority and uh, you know they represented the uh, kingdom of god now these same apostles 
are the ones uh, who started stirring the um, early church okay into its destiny so we see a lot of what they did in the acts of the apostles so when we look at the acts of the apostles you know there are uh, some passages here uh, i don't know how familiar uh, each one of us is uh, with these passages so though it may seem a little time consuming we can quickly read uh, the passages is what i thought so acts chapter 2 verses um, uh, 42 and 43 uh, can somebody read it i'll just i'll just say which passage and if someone can quickly say hey i'll do it then that will be nice then we can uh, you know go through all this fast so acts 2 42 and 43 anyone yes ma'am yeah please go ahead and they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers and fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles okay wonderful thank you so much susan so what are some things you observe here the apostles apostles what people continued in the apostles doctrine and fellowship great okay wonderful so you see that there are some features apostles doctrine means that they were strong in setting the standards of God's word for the people. So that is why it's known as the apostles doctrine. Now, they didn't allow the church to have some random teaching, you know, coming in and um, anything goes. No, but there was the apostles doctrine. So they were very keen about the right teaching of God's word. Now you may uh, want to ask what was the apostles doctrine. So it's understood as um, primarily the uh, books of the, um, you know, Old Testament, or, you know, uh, the Jewish uh, books that Jesus also used to read, because, you know, they would they would uh, read scripture. So whatever Jesus followed whatever he read as well as the teachings of jesus about the kingdom of god that is uh, simply put the apostles doctrine so there is a very clear-cut function of teaching which they were involved in and when you say teaching it was you know they were rooted in the truth of god's word the truth that jesus proclaimed the truth that jesus held on to Okay. So that is the apostles doctrine. And uh, also we see that uh, they performed um, and, you know, they, they kind of seem to be leading the group. So no wonder there was fellowship and, you know, there was this whole order established. And we uh, also noticed that great signs and wonders were done by the hands of the apostles. So you know, the manifestation of the supernatural is also something that we observe through the working of the uh, apostles. Okay, so we're just trying to understand some features from the scriptures that we read. Okay, so that's the whole point. Thank you, Susan. We have the next passage uh, of uh, Acts 4, verses 33 through 37. Can somebody read that, please? Can I read? Yes, yes, please, Shrikmar. And with the great and with great power gave the apostle witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and the great grace was upon them all. Mm -hmm. Neither was there any among them that lacked for as many as were possessors of lands or houses, sold them and brought the prices of the things that were sold, and laid them down at the apostles' feet, and the distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. And, jo and Joseph, who, had, who by the apostles was a surnamed Barnabas, which is being interpreted the son of consolation, a Levite of the country of the Cyprus, having land, having land, sold it and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Sri Kumar. So again, you know, what, what are some things that we observe here? We see that the apostles gave great witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. So that shows us the manifestation of the supernatural power of God through their lives. Um, and uh, great grace was upon them all. Great grace is, you, grace is, you know, God's empowerment 
it's a, his empowerment to do what he has called us to do. So obviously they were they uh, were able to you know they had that ability to to release God's works. So that is what we see here. Then we see some sort of a leadership you know it was a time when um, many people had decided to stay back in uh, jerusalem you know after the outpouring of the holy spirit uh, and many of them were foreigners and so they did not have possessions here in jerusalem but they wanted to follow god so you know uh, may, they stayed back and there was a lack among some whereas some others had but in the uh, uh, you know brotherhood they started sharing things so there is that whole leader how the apostles guided the people and there was a sharing of uh, material goods because of the situation at that time so we see leadership okay, how the apostles really guided them and uh, yeah uh, to the extent where uh, also you see a lot of respect so people honored the apostles and their guidance so uh, people who had a lot they brought and they put that uh, you know at the at the feet of the apostles so uh, we see like a really fair and a strong leadership uh, coming through uh, the lives of the apostles then going to acts 5 there are lots of verses given here in um, our notes so no need to read everything so basically this is the passage that talks about um, you know ananias and sapphira who tried to um, uh, like basically they they uh, tried to get uh, honor uh, you know through um, uh, I don't know what term to use it, but uh, money, right? So they kind of showed as if they they are um, giving so much to the church, but they had kept uh, a part of it uh, aside. So then you see again, you know, this is leadership, uh, and also the um, discernment that one carried by the Holy Spirit. You would wonder how did Peter know? No, he just tells Ananias, like, you know, you've lied to the Holy Spirit. So how did he know? So basically, you, you see that, you know, there's that discernment, um, the, the revelatory gifts of the Spirit are very much alive and active in the in the apostle. Um, and, uh, you know, they, they stand up for righteousness, they stand up for the standards of the kingdom of God. And so when when somebody had uh, done wrong there was uh, unfortunately in this case it was like you know uh, an extreme judgment that uh, both this couple uh, the, the couple had to face so uh, so you know you see that the kind of leadership establishing righteousness uh, and the standards of the kingdom that also seems to be a responsibility of the apostles they bring correction you know, they're very mm, very strict if you want to put it in simple uh, english about uh, the way um, god's word needs to be followed so that is very much a part of the apostolic Moving on to Act 6, you know, Act 6 is a passage where uh, the church was growing, thriving. Uh, so you had the um, Greek speaking Jews and the Hebrew speaking Jews. Uh, there was a clash between the two communities. Uh, you know, one set of uh, Jews, their widows were not receiving uh, food. It was not you know, being given to them in a timely way. So then, you know, came this whole thing that, oh, um, you know, we are being neglected and there is partiality and all. So you see, there's an issue in the church. Uh, but this this is more like, again, you could say leadership, authority, uh, guidance, church administration, church government. So the apostles could have just let it be and, and said, oh, one group is highly sensitive and, you know, the other group is uh, completely apathetic, forget it, whatever. But no, that's not how an apostle or the apostles dealt with issues in the church. They It seems very simple and very small that, you know, some widows are not getting their daily distribution of food uh, or, uh, you know, their, their distribution of food. So you notice that the apostles took a call. They made a decision. So, you know, making decisions, then uh, church government, okay, how should it be run? There has to be peace between the two communities. So wisdom, God's wisdom uh, is also uh, manifest through their actions. So they decided that they're going to pick six men, you know, full of wisdom, full of uh, the Holy Spirit, good report. And they picked uh, seven such men and they put them 
uh, on on they gave them this responsibility that you have to distribute the food properly and then the issues settled down so you see administration and church government okay which uh, is coming through strongly through this example um, then uh, again you know it uh, coming to strengthening the local church uh, in acts chapter 8 you have the example of philip Okay, Philip, he goes to Samaria, he preaches the gospel and people accept Christ. But then they don't know uh, about when Peter and John or the apostles in Jerusalem hear about it. They want to strengthen the church to the next level. Yeah, they are excited that there is a new church in Samaria, but that's not good enough for them. They, they recognize that, okay, Philip, an evangelist, he would have preached about accepting Christ. Well, that's beautiful. But how do we bring these people to maturity? So then John and Peter, they go and, uh, you know, they they uh, share about the gifts of the spirit, the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And, you know, you uh, read about this man called Simon, who was a sorcerer and the manifestation of the, you know, the Holy Spirit was so powerful that someone who was a sorcerer was, was um, you know, really thrilled about what Peter and John were doing. So, you know, then he he kind of asks them, give me, uh, I'll give you money, you know, give me this ability that when I lay hands on someone, like they too can uh, speak in tongues and then they rebuke him, you know, you and your money perish with you. So you see there that uh, apostles are interested in strengthening local churches. They are interested in bringing the people up to the next level of maturity in in God. And again, you know, they are quite serious and very strict about the standards of God's word. So in this case, Simon, he gets a nice rebuke from them uh, for, uh, you know, the, the, the way he assessed the gift of God. So uh, that is part of the apostolic. Now you have some more passages um acts 9 27 i'll look it up and i'll tell you okay uh the this is this is when barnabas uh, takes paul and brings him to the apostles okay um so uh, you would also notice that the apostles have a way of functioning with others in the leadership so uh, in this case barnabas who, uh, paul was paul was not readily accepted among the apostles because you know they knew his background how can a persecutor um, now claim that he believes in christ it this must be a trick uh, and so they were not ready to accept but then barnabas did that task of bringing in paul and you know uh, making him part of the leadership so um, Apostles also have this function of working with leaders and, you know, grooming leaders, mentoring, um, you know, things like that. So let's move forward. Acts 11. Yeah. Uh, and apostles are also uh, keen on knowing how the church is doing. Okay, and you could say particularly, we'll see later, you know, that uh, how apostles oversee um, churches that are uh, a, a part of their ministry and all that. So in Acts 11, uh, it reads, now the apostles and brethren who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. So you see, they are not physically present, but they're concerned. They are concerned about, you know, what is happening in a particular place or what is happening in a local church is is god being uh, represented rightly mm, uh, are the people maturing well enough so you know sometimes for for us um, uh, we we wonder you know, why is that somebody must be concerned about a local church which is so far away but that is the apostolic you know, generally you find that apostles they they don't uh, stop thinking about uh, congregations and people even after uh, time passes by or they are quite far away mm. yeah okay 
so then again you have like acts 14 and 15 i'll just sum it up over here so acts 14 and 15 um we see that you know there's this whole contention right about uh, circumcision of the gentiles uh, that comes up and um, uh, obviously that's that's not uh, something that god wanted for the the gentiles but you know people were pushing it they were like okay if you want to receive salvation you too have to be circumcised uh, and so when you know paul heard about it and barnabas heard about it they were very upset they took the matter to the leaders in jerusalem and then all the apostles came together and they made a decision okay and they uh, laid out the guidelines that no it's not necessary for salvation that a gentile be circumcised so you know they made it very clear they they made a decision and they made it very clear for the people to follow so that again is very apostolic to uh, you know if there is any kind of ambiguity confusion about the word of god or about the standard of god's word in any area what does the apostolic do you know the apostolic anointing sets it right uh, makes it very very plain to the people that hey this is it uh, there's no gray area uh, over here uh, it's black and white this is what we need to follow and this is how we must uh, you know keep up god's standard so these are some examples that we have that we have seen from the acts of the apostles so uh, it's summed up in our notes if you're looking at your notes then it kind of sums up whatever i shared just now i said there is an element of teaching there were signs wonders miracles church administration church government preaching uh, so they went to new areas and preached as well leadership authority um also persecution so in acts 14 there's also this um uh, this uh, time in iconium where the people rise up against paul and barnabas okay uh, and uh, yeah so they went through uh, apostles you would notice that they went through uh, a lot of persecution they were targeted so to speak so that also was a byproduct of the function to which they they were called then uh, strengthen they were all the apostles you know they were willing to strengthen they were keen on strengthening local churches so they would listen okay how is this church doing other churches doing what can we do to make it better so strengthening local churches expanding into new territory territories if you look at the um, the ministry that uh, you know god called paul and barnabas to um, they went on missions they went to you keep reading you know new places oh they went to uh, philippi then they went to this place after macedonia they moved on to another region so they were constantly and he was trying to get into asia so so many new territories that um, they they were passionate about taking for the gospel so they would go and then you see them preaching okay this is the lord jesus christ believe in him um, receive salvation and then not just abandon the the congregation there but you would notice that um, you know paul he usually his trips are like he'll go in a route and he'll kind of come back in the same route strengthening the churches okay so he was concerned okay there are a set of believers there how are they doing are they growing in god so that is the apostolic we're really caring about the state of the body of christ and the local churches so these this is the example that we get from the uh, new testament uh, and we said that you know there are uh, many different uh, apostles mentioned uh, we have paul you know very clearly uh, he is an apostle and he himself acknowledges it in the writings generally his writings will begin as uh, paul an apostle of the lord jesus christ so you know he knew his calling and he acknowledged it also there are passages given but i'm not you know making us read in the class you can go back and read it uh, in acts 14 14 for the first time barnabas is um, um he uh, is referred to as an apostle okay so that's what i've been saying um uh, and also what what i uh, s uh, told you know some of our friends here see paul is an apostle so is barnabas but their functions are so different 
uh, you don't read too much about Barnabas, you know, after a while. Initially, it was Barnabas who brought Paul on the scene. And then, you know, uh, it's, it's more like Paul and team. Now, Paul kind of uh, uh, took over and he was the one who is talked about a lot more later on. And his function and role was so different compared to Barnabas. So, you see, uh, both are in the same office of the apostle, but the, if you want to call it manifestation or the function or the assignment, uh, it is different. Okay, so that's how we understand. Um, we can't we can't try to box God into one way of manifesting an anointing. Uh, so anointing is same, apostolic anointing, apostolic office. So they're all called apostles. When they're called apostles, it's very clear cut that they're in the office of the apostle. Ephesians 4, 11 and 12. But the way it's manifesting is quite different. So that is something we, we need to uh, recognize. So then you have the mention of, we saw yesterday, Romans 16 and verse 7, Andronicus, Junia, they were also apostles. Now, what, what did they do? Um, you see, when something is not talked about a lot, you don't have too many, uh, I mean, you can look up and see, okay, is there more written about Andronicus or Junia, even Junia for that matter? Actually, no. So for us to come up with a theory of what did they do? How did they function? It will be in the realm of speculation. We don't know. We don't know. Now, people can come up with all kinds of teachings and say, this is what they did. And this is what we should see in the church today. But, you know, I would be I would be very cautious to take that because I don't know. The Bible doesn't. It's it's uh, just, you know, uh, sharing their names once. Right. Uh, so then we don't know how how the apostolic came um, was released through their lives. But we do understand that it would have been different, you know, like Paul was different, Barnabas was different, Andronicus, Junia. You also have a mention of Silas, Timothy, Titus as apostles. Okay, so uh, the references are there. You could just go up and, and uh, look it, uh, you know, look it up and you'll notice that they are termed as apostles again based on whatever function they were called to. Uh, Silas also, if I'm not wrong, in the early church, he had the, he was functioning uh, in the prophetic. Okay? He was functioning in the prophetic. So he had a prophetic anointing. Now, uh, I think he was in the office of the prophet. I don't know. But um, just, you know, kind of thinking about the question that somebody asked, two anointings uh, in, in one person's life. So Silas, or oh, he's also known as Silvanus. Um, he is an apostle. Timothy, again, uh, an apostle. Titus, apostle. James, the Lord's brother, um, who later on became the um, the you know, leader that the Church of Jerusalem looked up to. Uh, he's also called as an apostle. Uh, so you see, there are all these apostles. And yesterday there was a question. No, the question was uh, uh, only if someone encounters uh, Jesus you know, personally, if you have an encounter, only then um, you can be termed as an apostle. So the reason why I said that that may not be true is because you see all these people, the names that I mentioned, they're called as apostles. Now, based on the word of God, based on the Bible, can we confirm, you know, whether or not Paul, yeah, it very clearly says how he came to Christ and he had an encounter with Christ. Okay, wonderful. How did Barnabas come to Christ? Or, you know, did, did he have an encounter for God to call him an apostle? It's in the realm of speculation. Again, Andronicus Junior, they called as apostles. So did they have an encounter? I don't know. We don't know because it's not in the Bible. So uh, when somebody makes a statement that is like, okay, you need to have an encounter to be an apostle, um, I'm not too sure. Maybe, maybe these people all had uh, encounters. Maybe they didn't. We can't verify. So, uh, yeah, so that statement, uh, I, I mean, 
I can't confirm it. Okay, so I, I would just leave it as it is. Uh, now, just coming back to the chat here, uh, there is, yeah. Uh, are there any questions or comments, Shikumar and Sei, or you just posted? You clarified it. Thank you. Clarified. Oh, okay, great, great. Yeah, wonderful. Okay, so yeah, it's nice. So we are getting a hold of what an apostle and the anointing is about. Yes, Mangi. Good morning, Pastor. Good morning. Thank you very morning. much. Yeah, no problem. Go ahead. Well, I'm to ask my question. Yeah, sure. Um, just in Matthew 27, uh, I think it's also an act where God gave us gave his disciple the great commission go all over the world, make this apple, teach them to, to, to do the same. Um, does not that make, that, that commission makes, uh, give anyone who believe in Christ the same mandate or the same sending? Does that make all believers who are doing the same apostles or can it be reserved to few? Yeah. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah, thank you, Mangi. Good, very deep observation. You are right. You are very right. So every believer, as we said, you know, every believer can be prophetic. So every believer can be apostolic. So based on the Great Commission, you are right that all of us can manifest this uh, grace of you know, going and uh, preaching the gospel, entering new territories, uh, even starting new churches. But then it doesn't make us an apostle because the apostolic office as such, uh, the, the measure of the anointing, it's way greater than, you know, what believers can do at their um, given grace or capacity. So does it make your, uh, I, I, is it clear? Yes, it is clear. It is okay. clear, Pastor. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Mangi. Tasha, you have a question. Please go ahead. Hi, Pastor. Hi. I would like to ask, it's not about the apostle, it's about um, the... Sorry, it's about the prophetic. I was just checking if we'd be having more sessions. Like the one and one, the breakouts. The okay. Breakout. Okay, Taisha. So, uh, uh, the apostolic, um, the content on that, I'll see if I can complete it, you know, a little faster. So, then if we have time towards the end, we can have more breakout sessions. Is that okay, Taisha? Yes, that's okay. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Uh, and just want to encourage all of us, you know, you, you're still free to post prophetic words on the chat or on the stream page. So don't have to wait for the breakout sessions or on your, if you have a WhatsApp group, then you can do that too. Um, I'm coming to Rose's uh, um, comment here. She says, uh, uh, Pastor, remember the Spirit of God said, separate to me Paul and Barnabas for the work I have for them. This was the time of his apostolic commissioning. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, yes, uh, Rose, it was the time of their commissioning. I would say just that. Uh, it was the time of their commissioning. Uh, the time of their apostolic commissioning, I don't know. I mean, personally, I, I don't know if uh, I, I would say that because mm, looking at the encounter that, that Paul had in Acts 9, mm, it's, it's quite clear, you know, what God wanted him to do at get go. He told him, you're going to stand before leaders. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. And then again, you know, when Paul writes about himself in the book of uh, Galatians and other places, uh, he seems to express that he already knew. He, he knew. Uh, so he knew about the apostolic call on his life. Uh, he was commissioned to the m more missions kind of a, um, an assignment from Acts 13. Now, is it called apostolic commissioning? 
actually i don't know rose i don't know okay yeah thank you thank you so much yes all right so uh, we still have uh, about 5 minutes uh, let's continue <clears throat> so you know based on what we have studied so far uh, it's what we can settle in our hearts is that the apostolic anointing will manifest itself based on the assignment of the individual so there is no fixed formula we listed out functions we said oh there's teaching there's there's um you know taking new territory there's going through persecution there's all these things but to say that everyone who excuse me everyone who is called as an apostle has to check off okay a b c d everything is checked off it doesn't work like that okay so we have to be ready for the manifestation of apostolic anointing the way god wants it so um, yes the guidelines we've seen we, we kind of uh, understood the, the the boundaries if you want to call it within which this functions and uh, you know that that is helpful for us yeah so uh, again just um, building on what i um, shared with us today we see that uh, god calls people to specific work uh, and uh, it could also be to specific people so for example when god called uh, paul there it was clear to him right that he is going to suffer many things for christ he is going to stand before kings <laughs> and you know like i'm calling you to be an apostle to the gentiles so god made it very clear that he was an apostle too and then you know the gentiles but if you look at peter peter was very um, passionate about the jews so uh, a, a lot of what he did early on um, in the uh, first century church is focused on the jews so his apostolic ministry was focused towards them so when we talk about apostles you know there's an assignment there could be a set of people okay that an apostle is called to um there is distinction in the work that different people do so as paul said in first corinthians 3 6 and 10 uh, you know he talks about Apo um what's his name apollos he says that okay i uh, i planted apollos watered so there is a different role and a function uh, of uh, you know people in it could be the same apostolic office but you can have an apostle plant the church and then you can have an apostle sort of govern the local churches and lead the local churches so there is a distinction in the role that apostles can play in building and strengthening local churches uh, and the apostolic anointing is also about you know opening new doors uh, to the unreached Uh, opening new territories for the gospel so you know paul talks about it a door has been opened for me so he was always excited about new places that um, uh, the the church could enter and share about what jesus had done then uh, the apostolic is also about equipping people with the gifts of the holy spirit so you know paul wrote quite clearly to the corinthian church about uh you know the the manifestation of the he lists out nine gifts of the spirit and he encourages them to to use the gifts of the holy spirit so you find that the apostolic also encourages the um manifestation of the gifts of the spirit they are equipped with revelatory gifts of the spirit you know we've already talked about it some of the things that paul wrote he he affirms that i got it by revelation because he never really walked with jesus in the uh, you know natural or the physical sense okay so there are uh, some more points but i will not rush through it we will take it up in the next class uh, we could uh, play and close if that's okay so i just want to request uh, someone to lead us in a word of prayer please Heavenly Father, we thank you for all of the class. We thank you for your learning. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of the prophetic and the and the, and the apostle, apostolic anointing. We thank you so much. 
for what we have learned. Holy Spirit, continue to breathe on, upon us, continue to manifest in our lives as we grow and to impart knowledge and to edify the church in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen. Thank you. Thank you so much, Taisha. And thank you, class. God bless you. Uh, have a great day and a wonderful weekend. We'll connect next week. Uh, and uh, yeah, enjoy your classes. God bless. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you, too.